At a time when Europe was drowning in darkness, when science was silenced, reason was chained, and superstition ruled, a powerful light emerged, not from the West, but from the deserts of Arabia. A light so radiant that it illuminated the minds of men, revived forgotten wisdom, and sparked a civilization that would lead the world in science, medicine, astronomy, and philosophy. But what was this source of light? It wasn't gold, armies, or empires. It was a book. A book that didn't just command prayer, but invited reflection. A book that urged its readers to observe the stars, ponder creation, and unlock the secrets of the universe. That book was the Quran, the divine spark that lit the flame of the golden age of Islam, changing the course of human history forever. Islam, in what's the golden period of Islam? In that period, algebra was invented. Algorithm is an Arabic word. All these words, they begin with A-L. 10 to 1, it's an Arabic word. Arabic, our numerals are Arabic numerals. Did you pause and reflect on why we call them Arabic numerals? We just call them that, right? But somebody did good stuff with these numerals. It was in Baghdad a thousand years ago where they invented algebra. And there was advances in mathematics, agriculture, engineering, med, all of these fields. All at a time when Europe was disemboweling heretics. So something changed. 12th century, this gentleman came around. Al-Ghazali, a Muslim scholar, learned. At this point, Islam is maybe just a few hundred years old. People are reading the Quran and interpreting it however they sort of want to and feel like it. There's not a coherence to the practice of Islam until he comes around and codifies the behavior of a good Muslim. In much the same way St. Augustine, in his book, Cities of God, codified what it is to be a good Christian. How do you burn the witches? There's a recipe for that. You gotta, they got to be upside down so the blood does, you know. It's a whole, whole itinerary for how to be a good Muslim. And in, in his writings contain the assertion that the manipulation of numbers is the work of the devil. Two, actions that you see in nature are the will of Allah. Well, if you drop a stone and it falls, not Allah willed that. If that's your explanation, your curiosity stops. You combine everything happening in nature being the will of Allah to the manipulation of numbers being the work of the devil, and the entire enterprise of that golden era collapses. Now, historians, when they look at that era, they say, well, the Mongols came and they... You know, so historians think of the world in terms of wars and kings. They think less about it philosophically, about intellectual movements or the absence thereof. Islam rose again after this period, didn't have science associated with it. No new inventions in math. You look at the period of Islam in Spain, the period where the great Al Alhambra was built, there is no attendant science going on there. It's done. It's gone. And it is a, it is a cost that exists to this day. There is 1.3 billion Muslims in the world today who are not participants on the frontier of scientific discovery. Whether Imam Ghazali was responsible for the decline of Islamic science is a side issue. History is rarely shaped by the actions of one man alone. Blaming a single scholar oversimplifies the truth. But the real question we must ask is this. Does the Quran discourage reflection, critical thinking, or scientific pursuit? Absolutely not. In fact, Allah repeatedly commands us in the Quran to reflect, to observe the heavens, to ponder over creation, and to use our intellect. The Quran doesn't just allow thought, it demands it. The decline didn't come because the Quran stopped guiding. It came because we stopped listening to its invitation to think. We reduced a book full of cosmic signs into mere ritual, ignoring the divine push toward discovery that once made Muslims leaders of the intellectual world. In Surah Al-Imran 3190, Allah says, Indeed, in the creation of the heavens and the earth, and the alternation of the night and day, are signs for those of understanding. In Surah Fasilat 4153, 
Allah says, Soon we will show them our signs in the horizons and within themselves until it becomes clear to them that this is the truth. These powerful verses shows that the signs in nature, in the cosmos, and even within our own bodies are meant to increase our iman, faith, not weaken it. Allah does not ask for blind belief. He presents signs, evidence, patterns, and encourages deep thought. He says again and again that these signs are for those who reflect, those who use intellect, and those who ponder. This clearly proves that religion and science are meant to walk together. Science uncovers how creation works, while religion explains why it exists. When we study Allah's signs through the lens of both revelation and reason, our faith doesn't just survive, it grows stronger. In our videos, we explore these scientific signs in detail, connecting Quranic verses with modern discoveries, not to prove the Quran through science, but to show how science only confirms what was already revealed. Stay with us, explore these wonders, and rediscover the Quran like never before. Today, as the world faces confusion, division, and moral collapse, the answer is not in copying others, it's in reopening the Quran with the same hunger for knowledge that once fueled the Golden Age. The signs are still there. The guidance is unchanged. Now is the time to reconnect, reflect, and rise once again, not just as believers, but as thinkers, builders, and leaders, inspired by the very words of our Creator. Thanks for watching.